Greetings, welcome to another Deckard Games YouTube thing. And today we have a uh, contemporary thing because we are going to talk about um, Windows 11. I am using the new uh, Microsoft operating system for uh, about, uh, I don't know, maybe a week. And well, there are some um, news going around, confirmed, by the way, by uh, AMD and by Dr. Lisa Su, that uh, one can get a loss of performance using Windows 11 with uh, AMD Ryzen CPUs in your uh, daily tasks going from 3 to 5% and stuff like that. But in games, there are claims of losses around 15%. So um, I made a uh, review of my uh, 6800 XT a few months back and uh, I have those numbers and those were made using um, Windows 10, obviously, because um, Windows 11 didn't exist, and uh, why not pick those numbers up and uh, run the same benchmarks that I've uh, ran back then and uh, compare it with uh, the ones in Windows 11? Uh, well, I, th I say it is a uh, pretty cool comparison to uh, do. As I've stated, I've been using Windows 11 for uh, about a week now, week and a half, something like that, and uh, well, my opinion is um, overall good, I don't know. It is pretty much Windows 10 with some uh, improvements here and there, which is okay. I don't mind uh, Microsoft getting on uh, Windows 10 and uh, improve it here and there. Windows 10 is a uh, pretty nice and stable operating system, so that is fine by me. Instead of making a new OS, like um, when it happened with Vista and Windows 8 and stuff like that, when, uh, well, stuff didn't go uh, that well, well, they just grabbed Windows 10 and uh, let's make it uh, a little more rounder all around the uh, windows and stuff with some new options and menus and stuff like that. Let's put the um, start icon on the middle of the screen. You can push it to the left if you want to, but uh, sure, I don't know. I, uh, I enjoy it. I, again, it is pretty much Windows 10 with some improvements. We are here today to test those claims for uh, performance loss using Ryzen CPUs, not only I am using my um, 3700X from AMD, obviously, I am also using my GPU from AMD, so it's all AMD, so we are going to compare the numbers that I got with the same hardware using Windows 10 and now with Windows 11. Are those uh, allegations true or not? So uh, let us check it out. And so for this test, we are going to use um, my main rig, which has the exactly same CPU and GPU. When I tested my 6800 XD, I'm running a 3700 hex, uh, eight core, 16 thread CPU with my uh, MSI 6800 XD. And we are going to check a few games, especially two resolutions, 1080p and 4K. I'm gonna skip 1440p, because, uh, well, the purpose of this video is to compare between uh, Windows 10 and Windows 11, so no need to check all three resolutions. Again, we are going to compare performance on Windows 10 and uh, Windows 11 on 1080p and 4K. Let us kick things off with control at 1080p, Ultra Settings, this is a DirectX 12 game, and at the bottom we have the numbers from uh, Windows 10, where we have an average of 153 frames per second with 105 1% lows. At the top part of the chart we have the performance numbers for Windows 11 and we have an average of 169 frames per second with 141% lows. This is the first game and immediately we can see that in my specific case numbers are swapped. Windows 11 has a performance boost in uh, not only average frames per second, but only their stability. All the numbers from the minimums to 1% lows to 0.1% lows are higher than on Windows 10. Scaling to 4K, control running on Windows 10 gets an average of 49 frames per second and 43 1% lows. And going to Windows 11, we have 52 frames per second on average and 28 1% lows, again ahead of Windows 10. Next game on the list is Cyberpunk 2077. 
running at 1080p ultra preset with the high settings, another DirectX 12 game, and on Windows 10 we have an average of 92 frames per second and 60, 63 1% lows. Looking at the numbers on Windows 11, we have an average of 117 frames per second with a minimum of 71% lows. Again, Windows 11 comes ahead of Windows 10. Scaling Cyberpunk to 4K on Windows 10, we have an average of 30 frames per second with 25 1% lows. Looking at the numbers from Windows 11, we have an average of 67 frames per second with 49 1% lows. So this is pretty much double the performance of Windows 10, but not only the uh, operating system makes a difference here, but also the two patches and corrections and stuff that were released between this period of time. Next up we have Doom Eternal at 1080p, Ultra Nightmare settings running the Vulkan API, and on Windows 10 we have an average of 330 frames per second, because Doom runs on everything, and uh, looking at the numbers from Windows 11, we have 393 frames per second with 302 1% lows, again coming up ahead. Scaling Doom to uh, 4K on Windows 10, we get an average of 144 frames per second with 105 1% lows. Comparing it with the numbers from Windows 11, we have 178 frames per second and 141 1% lows, again coming ahead of Windows 10 and we can pretty much see a pattern forming here. Next game on the list is Grand Theft Auto 5 running at 1080p, max settings, the only DirectX 11 game on the list, and on Windows 10 we get an average of 125 frames per second and 66 1% lows. Looking at the numbers from Windows 11, we have on average 138 frames per second and 74 1% lows. Scaling to 4K on Windows 10, we get an average of 122 frames per second and 61% lows. Comparing those numbers with Windows 11, we have 140 frames per second on average and 72 1% lows. GTA 5 is one of those games where the resolution doesn't make much of a difference, but still, Windows 11 comes up ahead. Next we have Horizon Zero Dawn, 1080p, ultimate quality, a DirectX 12 game, and on Windows 10 we have an average of 141 frames per second and 91% lows. Looking at the numbers from Windows 11, we have 149 frames per second on average, and uh, pretty much 101% lows, again, coming up ahead. Scaling Horizon Zero Dawn to 4K, on Windows 10 we get an average of 70 frames per second and 55 1% lows. Looking at the numbers from Windows 11, we have an average of 74 frames per second and 61% lows. In this case, not a big difference, but still, once again, Windows 11 comes ahead. Final game on this list, Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, highest settings. Windows 10, we get an average of 147 frames per second and 65 1% lows. Looking at the numbers from Windows 11, we get an average of 146 frames per second and 89 1% lows. This is the only game where Windows 11 comes a little behind, but the difference is so small that, uh, well, it is pretty much irrelevant. Scaling to 4K, Windows 10 gets an average of 77 frames per second and 24 1% lows. Looking at the numbers from Windows 11, we have 93 frames per second on average and 89 1% lows. Again, Windows 11 comes up ahead. And there you have the numbers comparing Windows 10 with Windows 11. And in my case, well, it's absolutely the opposite from uh, what's being uh, told uh, on the interwebs and stuff, again, confirmed by AMD, so the problem exists, obviously, and the patches and corrections are coming out to uh, correct those issues, but uh, again, not everybody, as you can see, is uh, affected by uh, those issues. In my case, well, uh, all the numbers went up using uh, Windows 11. The only thing different that I have from the time is now, 
I'm using smart access memory, which wasn't a thing back then when I tested the um, 6800 XT, but um, from my experience, smart access memory, well, it gives you a little bit of a boost in frames per second in some games and in others, like Cyberpunk, well, it just doesn't give a crap if you have SAM enabled or not. So, uh, yeah, not everybody has the uh, same experience. So let me know in the comment section below, did you um, upgrade to Windows 11? Do you have any kind of issues using uh, AMD Ryzen CPUs? Would you like to see another video with a, uh, I don't know, low tier, low end CPU from uh, AMD? Let me know in the comment section below what you think in general of uh, Windows 11 and uh, its performance and uh, in daily use and gaming and uh, stuff like that. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a thumbs up because I appreciate your thumbs up. Click that subscribe button down here somewhere because your support is always and very much appreciated. You can follow me on social media using Windows 11 because why not? Or Windows 10 or uh, others, I don't know. Because social media is definitely a thing. As always, thank you very much for watching this quick video on a head-to-head uh, -head comparison between Windows 10 and Windows 11. And uh, until my next one, please do take care.